Um, yeah, and I'm happy to moderate um, this town hall meeting. So most of you know me, Mike Saunders from the Document Foundation on the team and a deputy on the board as well. So uh, the plan for this town hall meeting is first to do a uh, round of introductions. Um, so the candidates can introduce themselves, talk a little bit about themselves as well. Um, but uh, for time reasons, because we may want to discuss lots of things, let's keep the introductions to around two minutes per person, max two and a half minutes. I won't be incredibly uh, strict to the second, but try to keep two, two and a half minutes um, for your introductions. And then uh, we'll open it up to the community. We have community members present here as well, who um, I'm sure have questions. Um, so yeah, that's the, the plan as well. Um, as always, when we're having discussions, um, uh, raise your hand if you want to talk as well, and then we can see uh, the, um, the uh, schedule, the order of who wants to talk as well. So then we can have good, interesting discussions, constructive discussions, um, but always knowing who wants to make the next point. So. so Let's start off with a round of introductions, and I'll do it um, here purely randomly based on my layout in um, Jitsi. So up at the top, of course, if you want to turn your webcam on, it's um, uh, uh, we can then see you. But of course, that's purely optional as well. But the first person on the first candidate uh, on my Jitsi setup uh, is then Andreas. So Andreas, if you'd like to introduce yourself, um, two minutes. Okay, I'm Andreas Mantke, uh, I'm uh, from Germany um, um, and I um, support the, com uh, the commitment to our community. Um, I'm, I think, find it very uh, important uh, from the things that I, uh, done, I've uh, already done in the community in different parts from documentation to uh, small, uh, a bit development, uh, so that it's very important that we value every part uh, of uh, contribution to our community, to the product, to the marketing, to user help, and so on. And uh, it everything is very important. So. I would uh, um, in fact that it's uh, uh, important to have uh, bylaws uh, that more um, uh, uh, describe uh, the uh, contributions and what is uh, a value uh, to get the membership. And uh, in the past, there were uh, often themes, uh, discussions about it. And I hope uh, we can uh, manage uh, that it's, uh, there are clear rules. What is a uh, um, contribution that gets uh, membership if you apply for it? So I want to see that in the next two years that we have uh, clear rules for that. Um, so. I hope I can uh, contribute to that. So that's it. Okay. Next in my random Jitsi order is Core. Core. Yes. Good evening, all, or good day, depending where you are. Um, Core Naus from the Netherlands, uh, being involved in this whole community since two thousand four. Uh, and worked on uh, all sorts of things, uh, QA, translation, meetings, uh, a bit of hacking, uh, marketing, uh, promotion in the Netherlands, etc. And been member of the board regularly, a few times a member of the MC in the past. And uh, I, I love to see the, the huge variety of uh, contributions in the community uh, who are all important. Uh, we, and um, uh, and, and also, especially, uh, love to meet people from uh, all areas of all attitudes, etc. And which uh, usually happens at the LibreOffice conference or for those in Europe at Fostum. That's great. 
Um, yeah, and I hope to uh, uh, work in the MC with the tasks that our statues give give us. And uh, there's enough to do, I think. And apart from that, uh, see if we can find smart ways to uh, support the board in uh, growing the community. That's it. Okay, then we have on my list, Paolo. Hi, hi everybody. I'm Paolo from Bolzano, Bozen in uh, South Tyrol, Italy. Uh, I'm, uh, let's say, a, a free software advocate since uh, the 90s. And uh, wherever I worked, I tried to uh, spread the culture of free software. Now I'm, um, uh, I'm working for the local public administration, which is the province of uh, Bozen, Bolzano. And uh, I do coordinate a, a project for, uh, for our schools that started in 2005, which brought in all Italian uh, uh, language schools in South Tyrol, uh, Linux and free software. And where uh, at the beginning open office and then LibreOffice were the, let's say the main components or the most used software uh, used. Um, in the past, I, uh, in my work, I started also uh, a, a project with other colleagues to bring uh, uh, LibreOffice also to the to our public administration, um, and uh, I I assure that every a few months uh, a new version of LibreOffice in, is installed on all the seven thousand uh, computers we have in the province of Bolzano, and uh, as far as schools are regarded. Uh, uh, we have uh, 74 schools uh, using Linux and LibreOffice, uh, and uh, one of my jobs is uh, advocating, uh, I mean, uh, its use, helping users, teachers, uh, students, not only within my job, but also outside. Okay, next then is Shinji. Shinji? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, Cindy, we can hear you well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm Shinji Enoki. So I live in Japan. And so I contributed, started to the Open His Era. And, and so uh, I founding member of Japanese liberal Japanese team. And so my main activity is uh, committee organized uh, for Japanese community and event organize and sometimes QA uh, ask or translation. And so I want to uh, so more communicate to the so local community, so, um, mostly I focus to the Asian and yeah. So uh, I want to so increase to the uh, spread to the so. Uh, TDF members. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then we have next Gustavo. Gustavo. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Gustavo from Brazil. Um, I'm a systems analyst at the Brazilian Electoral Court, uh, where I'm now. Um, and I'm a volunteer in our project since 2003, when I started in the Brazilian project in documentation and after uh, uh, some extension development and uh, marketing and many fronts of collaborative work 
Uh, now I'm a member of the membership committee in the current term. Uh, and uh, I want to continue my collaborative work there in the membership committee, um, focusing in the formal tasks of the membership committee and the marketing in Latin American community. Um, I think we have uh, to go ahead with the improvements uh, in our membership committee system, the Proteus uh, tool. And uh, I think we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, activities to share uh, with the other communities around the world from the Latin American project. We are uh, doing now uh, the organization of the Latin American conference. In some weeks, we'll have more information for, for um, the whole project. And uh, I hope uh, this edition could be uh, uh, an addition to um, share uh, the actions that we could uh, um, use as an example for other local communities. Mike. Okay, then next on my random list is Jonah. Jonah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jana. I come from Tirana, Albania. Uh, and I joined uh, the LibreOffice community in 2016 when I attended my first LibreOffice conference in Brno, Czech Republic. Um, as part of, of uh, so I've been part of Open Labs Hackerspace, where we organize multiple events, including also the LibreOffice conference um, in 2018. Uh, which I hope I, uh, we saw uh, together there. And um, apart with Open Labs, um, I have been part of the membership committee uh, previously and also currently part of the Code of Conduct uh, committee um, and also um, standing for my membership committee. Also, I support the commitment to our community um, which uh, is um, a list of, or let's say, a plan that we have created uh, with other community members um, of how um, we see, um, let's say, our term as part of the MC. And uh, my main focus areas, uh, which um, I think I, I would bring like uh, value, are more um, mentorship, uh, and creating more welcoming or uh, diverse communities, uh, which is also some of the ways that I contribute to other open source communities as well. And one of them is also the uh, federal community. Um, and I believe that um, you know working or exchanging experience with other open source communities is something that um, helps working uh, together better. So yeah, thank you. And then I think the last candidate here, but I will check afterwards, but I think the last candidate um, here is Pranam. Pranam. Hi, everyone. So I'm Pranam from India. Uh, I have been involved in PDF since uh, 2019, uh, mostly as a developer. Uh, so I was looking how I could uh, be involved more in community apart from being just a developer. And I see this opportunity, and um, that's why I'm uh, uh, nomi I nominated myself uh, for uh, this membership committee, and I I have uh, similar kind of uh, experience in similar position in other organization like uh, Boost C plus plus library. So I think uh, it would be a great opportunity to use my experience uh, to. To be more involved in TDF too. 
that's it thank you okay thanks everybody uh i think that is all of the candidates now if i miss any candidates and um please raise your hand right now because i um as i'm looking on jitsi and the names are moving around but i think i have all candidates yeah somebody raise your hand if i've missed you if not then let's begin with the discussions so um, we have community members here um, they can raise their hand to talk um, they can post questions in the chat as well um, so um, and for the questions in the chat uh, the, the typed questions I will read them out um, so that anybody who's only listening to the audio uh, of this um, can also understand what's going on as well. So, um, yeah, first we have a question uh, from Gillem and then I'll hand over to Ail. But first, a question from Gillem and then the candidates can answer. So, Gillem asks To all candidates, in the past, several elected membership committee members resigned midterm in order to run for the next board, which, in my humble opinion, is rather unfortunate. If elected, do you commit to serve the entire term? Of course, there are always valid reasons to reason to reason at any time, but running for the board is not one of them, in my humble opinion. No reason to resign. No reason to resign. Yeah, thanks, Al. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, Gillam's question. Any candidates would like to answer, share their thoughts? Gustavo. Thanks, Gillam. I will be in the membership committee until the end of the term. Uh, Cole? Yeah, I definitely plan to uh, stay in the uh, membership committee. On the other hand, um, it, it's not an exception. We've seen it over the past mm, 10 years, 10 plus years, that now and then someone resigns from the NC to stand for the board. Um, usually that also is for good reasons, I would say. Uh, but I don't have the intention to uh, to quit halfway or something. Then Yona. Uh, yeah, same thing also for me. Uh, I plan to be part of the MC until the end uh, because also I think um, what I want to contribute as part of it, um, it's more related to what MC does. So you work more like with the, with the contributors, with the members, while the board is like a bit more on the mission and vision or uh, budget and all these kind of things, which it's not that I'm not interested, but I think um, personally, I would contribute more on uh, what MC does uh, compared to the board. So that's why I see myself um, running for the MC. Paolo? Yes, it's uh, it's the same for me. Oh. I, I don't consider it as a uh, good behavior in leaving a position, uh, I mean, before the end uh, of the term. We see this behavior made very often by politicians that uh, leave a position for another better position. And uh, as, as I said, I don't consider this uh, as uh, a good uh, or valued behavior. And uh, so I would really, uh, really uh, love to be part of the membership committee and run to the end, giving all what they can give. And uh, mm, let's say, mm, make my little, let's say, expertise uh, in uh, being able to contact people till the end of the term. Then next is Andreas. Um, I I will stay in the MC as uh, for the long uh, for the whole uh, period. I have never done something like that, jumping from one uh, uh, body to another, and I find it uh, also in the past very. Um, not very fun, very good to to jump from uh, one body to uh, another and leave the position that you are elected for. So I will stay 
at the end and never uh, join uh, uh, quit to join another party. Next, um, Shinji, I will read out your uh, response in a moment, but next is Pranam. Uh, as Paulo mentioned, uh, that would be a political behavior, I guess. And I'm just a plain old developer who is committed to whatever role is given to him. So definitely I'm going to complete my term, no doubt in that. <laughs> Shinji, it's fine um, to write in the chat as well, because I can just read out um, your message. So Shinji says, if I'm elected um, in the next membership committee, I intend to serve to the end of the term, but I couldn't care less if someone else runs for the board seat. So next up with a question or a point is AL then. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike. Um, I want to ask um, uh, the, the different candidates um, about the, the the role of the membership committee in general, and this is this is specifically for for those who have uh, who have put forward the the commitment to our community, but not but not just them. So um, let's remind ourselves that that the foremost or the first um, uh, role of the committee. That, uh, that is listed in the bylaws is representing the foundation against members of the board. And I would add, this is not officially stated, against the board where it is relevant. Um, uh, there's also obviously the, the technical aspect of, of uh, managing the board elections, but also receiving complaints re regard about the board and regarding its behavior. And there, in extreme cases, there are also impeachment uh, proceedings. But uh, the non-extreme case isn't uh, clarified in terms of what exactly it means, what's supposed to happen with complaints about actions or behavior of, of the board. So my question to you is, uh, how do you see uh, your role and the committee's role um, uh, in that capacity, especially considering how in over the, the past several years, at least the years I've, I've been a member, um, uh, there's been quite a bit of strife, um, uh, complaints and arguments amongst members of the board or, or regarding the behavior of individual members or the entire board. There's also the audit that we had, which puts into question um, uh, some aspects of how we've been running things. Um, so, of course, I'm, I'm not asking how would you have dealt with those things as an MC member, but how do you see your um, uh, um, your capacity or interest in in those duties um, uh, in an MC term? So three clicked at uh, the same time for me. I think the first was core. Yeah, it's a, it's a clear task that the statues give to the, uh, to the MC. Um, ob obviously, uh, these are powers uh, that uh, we hope uh, that, that we never have to use them. Um, but but and and I think simply uh, the best way to get along is try to uh, continue improving on relationships and to find ways if things happen and things will happen that make people feel unhappy left or right that we find ways to communicate about them and there are many ways you can think about but I think that's that's. Uh, the most important thing that, to me, it, that the MC has these powers, which are vital in case of, let's say, emergency. Uh, the fact that we have these powers or the MC does have these powers means uh, that we also have some resp responsibility in trying to contribute to good relationships and wherever they are broken or tend to get broken, uh, try to heal them. 
Thank you. Then Gustavo. Uh, thank you, Ayal. Um, uh, I, I, I'm a member of the membership committee in the current term. And what we saw in the uh, part of that time you, you mentioned it was uh, some frictions uh, inside the board uh with the board and the community uh, uh, and uh, some members and uh this was totally new for us in this term of uh the membership committee and in other past terms in the membership committee um i i am not a, a lawyer uh, and I don't know, I'm not a specialist in the law, uh, uh, the, the European law, the German law. I uh, don't uh, uh, have the know-how about it. Uh, but uh, I believe in the formal process of an institution uh, like uh, uh, TDF. And uh, from my side, um, I, I was uh, the first one to um, request explanations from the board about some situations. And um, with that information, I was one of the supporters of the audit uh, process uh, in, in the past year. Because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a, 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 a specialist. I'm a member of a formal body, and uh, I believe in the formal process of the legal legal authorities from German that are the foundational authorities and uh, the government authorities, uh, and. Uh, I believe I did my part of the the, the uh, uh, process in the process, and for sure the clarifications uh, 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 to the members uh, I also supported when uh, we inside the MC decided to uh, present to the members the information. Uh, uh, in the audit and uh, I believe in the formal process the formal process and the legal process I'm not a specialist I, I can decide uh, about what was done uh, in the right way or not but I believe the formal process will guide TDF to uh, the best uh, 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 way Thank you. Then, uh, Jona. Uh, so personally, what I would like to add uh, that also when we were working um, on uh, the commitment to our community, one of the first things was that, um, you know, when we want to work on achieving uh, specific things, we want to do it together with the board. Um, and also with the with the rest of the community, of course. But even that it's like the board and the MC, two different bodies. Um, I think you can um, achieve the things that you would like to for the community to grow the contributor base and everything when these two work together. When you have a positive environment, um, because in that way you know things can be more smoother. You have more transparency also in the community and so on. Uh, for example, one of the things that uh, we were thinking is working on the mentorship culture because it helps to get new people. But we believe that, uh, you know, it's not only MC doing this, but together with the board as well, getting also their feedback, their support and so on, we can make it better. So, yeah, what I wanted to add, basically, it's having more positive environment and working together closely with the, with the board. Uh, because also we can see that um, the new board as well um, uh, it's like 
have has changed, uh, let's say, a bit the, the environment in the community. Um, so yeah, we just want to, to see this relationship with them gets even better uh, in order to uh, have a community that is more also more welcoming, more diverse, more positive. Then next up is Paolo. Yes, thank you, Ayel, for your question. Well, mm, typically before, I mean, uh, um, candidating or mm, trying a new, I mean, uh, running for, for, for a position, for example, I typically uh, do not follow the, the, the worst case rule in, uh, in trying to imagine how the, the role uh, I will cover will be. So uh, the, the membership committee uh, members have a mission, have a special uh, mission. And um, whenever something bad happens in relations with other um, members or with other um, uh, let's say part of the uh, of the document foundation. Okay, I think that members will find the best ways to uh, to treat those cases, and uh, I think that in 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 those cases, hopefully they will never uh, happen. I will mm, try to use my let's say my moderation skills to to try to. Uh, uh, heal things, okay? So, um, I want to, to, let's say, start thinking uh, of, uh, of the role of the membership committee and of the other uh, parts of the document foundation uh, in positive terms. Okay. Um, Shinji, feel free to uh, prepare an answer, type in the chat as well, and I can read it out um, when it's ready. If there are no other answers to this point, then I'll move on. Okay, sorry, I I, I will write in chat af after. <laughs> it's no problem, Shinji, it's no problem. That's why we have the chat as well. So when, when you type, I will read it out. Um, I can read it out okay. later okay. In, in, a, okay. in a few minutes. That's fine, yeah. Um, but if there's nothing else, then... Next up from the questions, um, the first one from Olivier is, what are the plans of each, I guess each candidate, to improve retention of members in TDF and reduce turnaround? Gustavo. Um... It's easy to um, become a TDF member. It's uh, uh, easy because uh, I believe um, we have uh, uh, an interesting project to share, uh, interesting tasks. Um, we, we are fine. We are fine in relations uh, 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 in, in our infra uh, in many aspects we are a reference uh, in free software projects uh, and it's easy to become member of the project uh, and after member of of tdf um, but indeed uh, it, it's a bit difficult sometimes uh, um, uh, in in the moment of the renewal of the membership um it, it's difficult to see the that that, that member uh, uh didn't reach the the uh, our our uh, uh, requirements uh i mean uh, non trivial and continuous work non trivial and continuous contributions and inside the latin american community I think we found a, a way to 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 do it to retain the member uh, in in our community and in our foundation. Um, our approach is weekly sessions, a really friendly environment, uh, clear goals, and 
shared responsibility. Uh, these four uh, aspects uh, we uh, uh, are building every every time, uh, uh, and uh, we can see we we can retain uh, uh, our our members uh, uh, with this. I believe in this, and uh, uh, my uh, uh, goal, one, one of, of my goals uh, in the next term of the membership committee is, again, share this experience with the other membership committee members and other liaisons in the community and other communities. Uh, I think we can uh, do a great job in this topic about retain members thank you okay uh next is yona uh so first thing that came to my mind when reading this question is basically creating incentives for um for people that are members uh, of the community or already contributing uh, and working also together with the board to see what is like the best way. Uh, one of the things, sometimes it can be, you know, some help uh, having their say in future direction of LibreOffice, but sometimes it can also be, you know, just um, expressing gratitude, appreciation um, regarding the contributions that they are making, um, even though sometimes it, uh, it might not seem too big, but just saying a thank you for their contribution and uh, saying thank you, like even sending some postcard or sometimes saying thank you on social media to their contributions, it really makes a lot uh, for people because it um, not only validates, but it really appreciates the, the time that they are giving to the community. So this can be um, one of the ways that we can uh, keep people to still be part of the community. And maybe also those will be the ones helping to get some new ones as well, um, being the mentors of the new people that can join the community. Then next is uh, Life, who um, just joined a few minutes ago. Uh, Life, we are in the discussion part of the call now, but feel free to do a very quick introduction, um, if you like, to yourself. Uh, and uh, I, am, uh, I, I was uh, occupied with work until uh, uh, 20 minutes or something <laughs> like that ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Leif Jöran. I'm uh, living in uh, Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, I have a large family, uh, two grandchildren. Um, uh, you probably have seen me, most of you, uh, at any of the events or conferences uh, that we usually visit. So um, uh, I felt that, okay, this is uh, the time to, to take up uh, on my promises to, to help out with transparency and so on. Uh, so to the actual question, I think um, uh, at least make sure uh, that uh, all of the uh, tasks or, or the blank spots that we, we can find uh, where, where we can have interested people and map this together with others so that we get more like clusters of people that uh, can support uh, themselves in 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 uh, in in a better way uh, make sure no one is uh, alone in 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 the, the task and of course basically make sure like already Jon also said that uh, there should be uh, proper uh, credit and uh, uh, if there are tasks that uh, need to be done make sure that uh, that they are all uh, uh, very clear and visible and then uh, make sure that this uh, can be carried out uh, either alone or in, in, in the cluster or, or that the group effort also counts uh, as well. And uh, of course, uh, uh, as a foundation for, for my, my transparency goal is that 
you should keep the members in so they should not get out and if if they get out make sure we know why uh, so keeping stats of that so yeah um ha having uh, uh people around is usually the best way to stay so um yeah i i i i think i stopped there because otherwise we'll repeat what others already said so thank you next is core hey hello yes uh, as live said a lot has already been said and and i won't repeat that uh, obviously, uh, we worked on, on getting more members in uh, in the MC terms that I uh, was part of the MC uh, years ago. Uh, and uh, I think with uh, there's a lot of ideas. Um, and, uh, 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 if I hear Gustavo talking about things in, in Latin America, I think a lot of that is really useful. Um, and and I, maybe it's, it's useful if we when we start working on ideas we do something on measuring effect uh, maybe the effect is uh, in, in one country or one part of the world different than in others so that we because in the end uh, there's always more ideas than hands and time to get stuff done so try to do it smart that would be my uh, advice and next up is pranam Um, so, so for this question, I would like to bring um, a developer's perspective into it. I feel there are like two kinds of developer who get involved in any of the project. One is because they are genuinely really passionate about uh, the project. They want to contribute and give back to the community. And I think these are the people who are always involved and they, we are never worried about if they are going to retain their membership and stuff like that. And there are then there are other developers who just might, there, there might be some people uh, who is facing some kind of bug and we are not solving it. They take matter into their hand and they, they solve it. And it's just a very short, short time contribution and stuff like that. Um, and then later on, they, they just never open Bugzilla to see what kind of bugs there are because they are, the, what concerned them is solved and stuff like that, but uh, because they, they are not aware of what other bugs there are, they might uh, not even start contributing again. So we can make a, a subscribers list of particular uh, features where we can ju they just get mail from the, the subscri subscriber list of particular mail, like we can prompt them when they are contributing and Bugzilla or somewhere. And uh, so they know that this exists and it's in their expertise from the previous contribution and they can contribute it in their free time easily. I think that makes sense uh, for uh, retaining developers, I guess. And then Andreas. Okay, I find it very important always to, to, rem to emphasize it again, that we have a very uh, um, friendly uh, atmosphere in our bodies. I'm, uh, I have uh, attended very often board meetings in the past and uh, I saw there uh, were uh, ways to, uh, to uh, attack people and that's not the best way uh, to, to work in a friendly project. But what we, what also very important for for members is that they have a say in the project, and uh, so it's important to have uh, um, questions for for uh, for the use for our com community members that they can uh, um, answer questions and um, tell us uh, what uh, is important for them for the next uh, terms and what should be uh, improve, uh, improved. And they have also, it's also important that they have a say about uh, what is important for our product, our free software, uh, what should be implemented 
and uh, what should we pay with our with the donation money for so that's important that's a value that you can get uh, out of the membership that you have a say then we have paolo well, uh, the question about the uh, the member retention is a is a thing that we discussed very often, also in other communities. For example, the our local uh, Linux community, we have an association where I'm a member of, and uh, it happens from time to time that members uh, you don't see them for a year, two years, and so on. Okay, the there is. I think a sort of selfishness in uh, in the community if nobody uh, let's say notices this and the uh, the only solution i mean one of the solutions is to uh, try to get in contact with the, those people again of course anything can happen in life uh, you can change job i for example I, I i had a very good friend that changed job and was no more able to uh, let's say to um, to give the same contribution he was giving in the past, a very good contribution. So uh, the the Document Foundation doesn't have only one project; it has uh, three projects. And so uh, maybe uh, some members could be interested in participating in another project, not necessarily, for example, in LibreOffice, but uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in the document liberation, for example, uh, it is a thing that, uh, for example, we experienced here in South Tyrol, uh, as far as the our public administration is concerned. Where at the beginning we were pushing a lot on uh, the software, so on LibreOffice, and then uh, we gathered other people helping in. Uh, Getting as mission, I mean, bringing the office to the to the to our public administration, thinking it in other terms, in terms of document liberation, and so in uh, thinking in terms of formats. So a very good friend of mine, Anton, says, "Okay, when you don't see a person for some time, uh, pick up the phone and call him or call her." Okay. So this is a thing that we don't have to forget to do. So always keep in touch with people, especially if you don't see them for some time, to limit, I mean, uh, uh, a loss. Because every time uh, some some member, a uh, member of a community uh, gets away for some reasons, uh, I mean, and uh, having nobody of that community contacting him is a very bad thing. In my opinion. Okay. So, meanwhile, in the chat, um, I'll read out again for people who are only listening to the audio. So, uh, Shinji responded to Ayo's question, the, the previous topic, saying, Thank you. I think it is a very special case where the MC responds to a complaint from a member against the board. Generally, communication occurs between the board and members. I understand you are questioning the transparency of the board. I think there are areas where the board needs to improve, but it is not within the normal scope of the MC's powers to intervene in that. Of course, if an objection is raised through a formal process, it will need to be addressed. To which AL then responded to Shinji saying, the fact that the MC doesn't pick up and act on member complaints regarding the board is a serious problem and part of the cause of how things deteriorated so badly during the last board's term. Then we had another question from Olivier, question two to the candidates. Please explain how you plan to improve TDF membership for minorities. Uh, Gustavo was first, I think. Um, for this question, um, I would split in two cases. 
the individual case and the group case. The individual case, I think we can uh, um, we can have a, a good practice uh, to to identify and and uh, 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 to identify and and uh, uh, embrace the, the this. Uh, uh, individual from a, a minority, uh, and I believe the again the Latin American approach is perfect for individuals. Uh, sessions in monthly, weekly session uh, uh, in in a time frame uh, 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 with uh, repetition. Uh, frequently, uh, a friendly environment, uh, clear goals to reach by this individual, and shared responsibility to uh, uh, understand the, the free software concepts. Uh, I think we can uh, uh, embrace the individual uh, in this way. And for uh, groups, um, I believe um, we should uh, identify what the group needs and um, the way to uh, uh, do something for them, I think could be the local government that support that minority group, or another NGOs that uh, uh, do the same uh, uh, work. Uh, and we have some examples in Latin America, in Mexico, uh, 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 Mauricio do something, uh, do this kind of work, collaborative work in, in an a, in a NGO, for, for kids, uh, we already do it. We already did it uh, in Paraguay in the first Latin American conference with the Guarani translation and documentation. Uh, and uh, I think uh, these two ways are important to reach uh, uh, the uh, interaction of this kind of people. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, Yona. Um, personally, what I would like to add uh, on top of what Gustavo was already mentioning is also when it comes to uh, translation or using a simple English, because uh, sometimes that's also that's also considered as a barrier for people to uh, join a community uh, or makes it higher, harder for them to start their contributions. So. Sometimes it's not uh, always easy, you know, to always have translations available, but at least uh, reminding the community uh, to use uh, simple English or when it comes to documentation as well, um, use uh, using a language that is a bit more understandable for everyone. So at least, you know, to not have it um, as a barrier for people that wants to join. Um, and um, also uh, making uh, or supporting mentoring uh, so we can help more people to get on board um, and understanding also what are some gaps we might have when it comes to onboarding, what's something that it's very difficult for them. Uh, is it sometimes the tools that they are using or it's something else? Um, another thing that um, it's... Um, kind of related a bit also with the time zones, uh, because I, I really like that, for example, these calls are happening in different time zones, because in this way, we are giving possibility to a lot of people to have a saying and ask people uh, different questions when we are doing them. So connected to this is also organizing or uh, doing events, um, workshops, and so on in um, 
not only in Central Europe, which usually most of the conferences are happening, or um, uh, but also like in uh, other local communities in Asia, Latin America, and so on, and working closely with the uh, with the local people because also you know they know better um, which local communities are active or how to approach them as well. Um, so in this way, we can help uh, basically to have a community that it's also um, more diverse and we can be uh, more inclusive uh, in this way. Yeah, that's my, from my side. Paolo. Well, um, just adding something that uh, has already been said that has not already been said. Um, here in South Tyrol, we we uh, we have three languages, and one of these is Ladin, which is uh, uh, in uh, in Switzerland, Retoromanic. But of course, there are variations in uh, in the same language. And uh, in the past, uh, um, Microsoft, uh, no, I mean, no, the mm, people try to. Um, to, to translate uh, the interface, uh, adding dictionaries for Latin. But uh, first, uh, Microsoft was never interested. And I know people, in, uh, and in particular, there are three valleys that are interested in this, which is the so-called uh, Val Gardena, Gardena Valley, uh, Val Badia, and Val di Fassa di Les, where they speak uh, uh, this uh, uh, nice language, which is Latin. And uh, I think there would be people interested in restarting and uh, um, um, and, and helping in uh, in in doing some work in in uh, interface translation uh, and uh, in uh, reusing dictionaries that uh, then uh, have never been uh, used and so having at last uh, and finally uh, a an office suite that respect their minority and uh, doing something that uh, Microsoft has never been able to do or in the, that was never interested in doing. Gustavo again. Um, this topic is important and uh, following Paulo's uh, uh, talk. Uh, I would like to to uh, present an idea for uh, us, for the future members of the membership committee. Uh, I don't know who, but we will be there. We all, all of uh, someone. Uh, in this group, we will we'll, uh, we'll be there. Um, <clears throat> we need to uh, pay attention for our one member community. We have some uh, 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 special members uh, who are doing translation uh, or documentation alone without any other uh, kind of support from other local or native speakers uh, people uh, it's a, an idea talking with you um, i think we can uh, do something to uh, support our members from one lang one member from languages, recording with has just stopped. One member uh, working. Thank you. Okay. So, recording is on. Any more questions? Anyone watching? Feel free to to pose any questions. Raise your hand or write in the chat. Any questions or thoughts for the candidates? Um, Shinji answers uh, Olivier's second question that we were just discussing, saying, 
In the case of East Asia, I can imagine three reasons for not becoming a member. Firstly, in East Asian culture, it is not a good idea to highlight your contributions and self-recommendation is not very popular. Secondly, there is a language barrier and people are not very interested in global activities. Thirdly, they want to focus on their own area of contribution and see little benefit in other areas. Regarding the first point, we encourage people to become members. Regarding the second point, we will increase interest by providing information in the local language and by increasing opportunities for interaction. I think regional conferences are very effective. So, next question, I think uh, Al again. Um, uh, I want to ask um, about the um, the let's say division of labor or responsibilities between the membership committee, uh, the the board, and, and maybe even um, uh, uh, local user groups or language speaker groups. So um, we've heard just in Shinji's answer right now about um, about local conferences. We've heard about uh, reaching out to or interacting with, uh, with, with user groups. And uh, these are, are things that um, are typically done or carried out, but mostly by um, uh, either the, the board or the, or the TDF employees, um, uh, like Sophie, for example. Um, and, and since you also, the, there's, there's some sort of overlap between not the responsibilities, but at least the interests of, uh, being active in that sphere. Um, what do you, what do you see among those things I've mentioned or, or, or the, 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 the interaction with, uh, with, with, um, groups of members or members, etc. Um, what do you think that the, the membership committee needs to do itself, as opposed to um, encouraging users or groups of users or the board to, to do. Any thoughts or answers for AL's question? Gustavo. Um, uh, let me try. Let, let me try. I, I, I'm not sure uh, uh, I got all of your context, AL, but uh, let me share my experience uh, in, in the membership committee in the current and the past terms. Um, uh, the the, the, uh, uh, the Membership committee uh, has uh, different uh, uh, responsibilities than the board and other uh, uh, committees and uh, uh, formal and informal committees in, in the project and the foundation. Um, and it's a bit difficult to identify what is the the border the limit of the, those responsibilities for example uh, some members send a message to us in the membership committee uh, with complaints about other members this is really difficult to uh, uh, handle because we also have the code of conduct committee uh, and uh, there's a, 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 a unclear uh, a border in those responsibilities. In my opinion, in my opinion, uh, the membership committee could uh, get the code of conduct committee responsibilities. I, I don't know because why we have two committees for almost the same uh, uh, cases. Okay, one is for the foundation, 
the formal things of the foundation and another is for the project. Uh, but from my opinion, uh, uh, it's uh, it's the reason for some confusion. It, 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 it's the part of the problem, not of the solution. Uh, and for sure, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but we we should discuss this kind of of, of uh, uh, issue. Uh, and uh, the response, some of responsibilities uh, of the membership committee are uh, unclear, including in the statutes. And uh, we uh, sometimes need to ask our lawyer to clarify uh, what we can do and what we should do. Because this, uh, and because we are a group, a committee, and have a lot of opinions, um, it's difficult sometimes to uh, give to the members of the staff or the whatever uh, fast answers, because we need to identify what is the limit, what is the border of the membership committee responsibilities. Thank you. Uh, Yona. Uh, I, I also wanted to, to say just a quick thing also to Gustavo before uh, giving my answer. When it comes, I think, to the, to the COC Code of Conduct Committee, and the membership committee, I think, um, to be honest, I don't think they are the same or uh, the membership committee can do the job of the code of conduct committee uh, because it's also like two different things that they are doing. The code of conduct is really focused uh, on making a community that is welcoming and making sure that people feel safe in the community and so on. And there are some procedures that um, are taken uh, in case someone is not feeling welcoming or some, like we have uh, someone complaining about something. So that's why um, when it comes to at least the, the Code of Conduct Committee and the Membership Committee, I feel there is like a clear, um, understanding why it needs to be two different bodies or two different committees. Uh, but um, going back to AI's question, um, I think sometimes you don't need like a very clear borders uh, who does what, because sometimes the most important, you know, is to take the initiative or to take the lead to start doing something. Um, and I say this because, for example, from my experience in the Fedora community, uh, when it came uh, to mentorship, for example, which is one of the topics that we have been focusing a lot lately, uh, we weren't sure who should do that in the community. Um, we have like different teams, working groups and so on. Uh, but instead of focusing who should do that, um, we just started as a small group of people that were interested in that and start creating a plan uh, or an objective, what we wanted to achieve and trying to get to the people in the community that could help us with that, which I think the same could apply also here. So for example, focusing on um, what are some of the issues that we want to solve, or for example, we want to have more local community representation or so on. And then we start bringing together people that uh, are that are kind of on the same page, or the people that we think should be there uh, because they will help us to achieve what we want. Um, so I think personally, MCIC maybe taking the lead uh, and starting um, having these topics first of all, and then going in the community and finding who are the ones that needs to be there when starting the conversation and making some planning. Uh, Marco, Marco, you um, just joined um, not so long ago. So although we're in the discussion part of the call now, feel free to, to do a quick introduction as well. Uh, thank you, Michael. So uh, good evening, 
Uh, to everyone, my my name is uh, is Marco, and I'm running for the MC. I hope you had the chance to uh, read my statement. Uh, of course, if there's further questions, uh, I'll be happy to to answer them. Uh, on this one, uh, I would uh, like to state that I agree with what uh, uh, what Yona said. I think uh, uh, we can work uh, on um uh more uh, uh let's say uh useful uh, interconnection with uh, with other communities so uh just uh, uh to explain myself uh, and as i was working uh, in the uh, province of uh, bolzano with uh, with polo Dongilli, uh we started uh, uh, ah, yes, sorry, the context is that uh, we are uh, uh, developing an educational uh, operating system and um, uh, Paolo had the idea to start interacting uh, with uh, the other communities and uh, also in this case private entities that were uh, basically doing the, the same job and um, having their point of view on uh, uh, problems that uh, we were encountering was uh, very useful, I think, because uh, 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 maybe they had a completely different approach to the same problem we, we were encountering. And that's something uh, uh, I think also uh, TDF could uh, be enhanced from. Andreas. I would add to that. I have also the exp the um, opportunity to, to work with another project uh, with Plone, and uh, I think it's uh, very interesting to to get uh, in contact with them uh, from our side uh, more uh, and uh, look how they deal with uh, the same prob uh, problems uh, or have better solutions for for uh, interacting community and getting people involved uh, and uh, active um, in the project um, they they are um, very mo most of them are very uh, uh, working in uh, small companies and uh, freelance and so on and via and volunteers so the very mixed uh, community and it's Maybe they're inter very interesting to to get in contact with them and uh, see how they um, get people involved and lucky. Um, Cole, just before I come to you, let me catch up a little bit on the chat. Um, Lota made a general comment saying, "Just want to say thank you to all candidates for standing for the election and showing your commitment." To this project thanks a lot to all we need this uh, these engagements thanks also to the acting board members and the team al then followed up on gustavo's answer um, a few minutes ago saying what are your thoughts on fleshing out the membership committee's tasks and responsibilities in the bylaws or some other binding document through a process of community deliberation on that of course and then he said not the bylaws but i meant the statutes Gustavo said, we need the community bylaws. Sophie said, I agree with Jonah that the code of conduct has a very different role than the membership committee, and I would like to see it fully separated from the other instances. Paolo responded to AL about question three, saying this is exactly one of the tasks that the commitment to our community promotes, proposes. Excuse me. Shinji said, responding to Sophie. I agree. I don't think the membership committee should take on even a part of the code of conduct role. And Paolo, Paolo Vecchi from the board of directors said, don't forget to invite other communities to the Libre Office Conference. I think we made it as clear as possible that we would like to meet them during the conference. So, Cor, over to you. Yeah, yeah, a, a very brief comment. Um, one consideration that that I would like to bring in is um, uh, a strong community is important, so we must take care for the community. Uh, but 
for what reason do we have the community? What is the thing we want to uh, achieve with it? So it's not the community for the community, but the community for our goals. Uh, and that's something we must keep in mind as well. Okay. I think we've caught up on the questions in the chat but we still have a bit of time left in this town hall meeting so anybody else is welcome to write a question in the chat or raise their hand and talk AL says, um, I always have more, but I'd like others to go ahead. So, yeah. Otherwise, AL, um, feel free to ask questions. You are a community member. Ask as many questions as you'd like. Um, I want to ask, uh, especially members of, of previous um, uh, membership committees, um, to share an experience, assuming we've had one, of, uh, of handling, um, uh, formally handling um, uh, complaints about, say, and specifically if we've ever had a case of a complaint about like personal misconduct, uh, violence, or sexual harassment. And I'm obviously I'm not asking for individual details, but if we've had the experience of, uh, of going through that process, and if this has happened, um, uh, how was it eventually dealt with? And, and to your knowledge, um, uh, did we, well, not your specific MC, but the MC in general, um, uh, were, were, did we deal with this properly? Or um, are there lessons from previous cases of this being handled that, uh, that you know that we need to? Recording develop? has stopped. Uh, Gustavo. Um, sometimes when uh, it happened, we um, already um, didn't renew uh, the membership from uh, the membership of a, a member. Uh, it happened in some years ago. Uh, during the last term, uh, when uh, we had uh, claims from a member or another, uh, mentioned another member or against the community, against the, the, the project or whatever we do nothing we did nothing we did nothing because it's not our task is the task of the code of conduct committee and when we did we uh, uh, had a strong um, uh, opposition from the board and uh, we handle the opposition, we, we talk it, and we solve it. We had a solution, but because this kind of problem, um, I uh, said uh, minutes ago that uh, from my opinion, we should uh, handle this kind of problem inside the membership committee because uh, uh, the, 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 it's, it's a situation when uh, we have reasons to deny a membership but uh, someone in, including inside the membership committee can say it's not your business it's not your business you you should 
see only the technical contributions and you say no and they say no just technical contributions it's it's a, a bit difficult we should solve this problem uh, in the next uh, 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 term and uh, I, I don't have the solution, the perfect solution. Maybe we can have the code of conduct committee uh, or uh, 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 or not, I, I don't know. But uh, the future members of the membership committee uh, at least should communicate with the members to clarify what is the responsibility of the membership committee and what is not. Thank you. Next is core. Yeah, yeah very brief. Uh, in, in additional to what Gustavo says, uh, in, in the current setting, we have a code of conduct uh, to handle cases where uh, there are doubts about someone's behavior or complaints or whatever. Uh, and I, I think that uh, since we agreed on on that, that's uh, the way how things have to go. Uh, that's the first step that needs to be uh, done if there are situations. And on IL's question, uh, I've I indirectly heard about uh, some case of trouble with a member that, but n not. As far as I remember, I've never seen uh, uh, cases that that really escalated uh, directly. Okay, Yona. Um, what I would like to add um, is that when, at least when I was part of the membership committee, I don't remember to have like some case that someone you know came to complain about something specific uh, but I cannot share when it comes to the COC committee since I'm uh, I'm also part of it um, but personally what uh, how I would see the collaboration at least between these two um, is that uh, since the, the MC is the one that is really close to the community, whenever they get some case or someone that um, it's it's not feeling comfortable in the community or has some complaint to work together with a code of conduct committee um, so that uh, you know they can contact us directly. Because also another thing um, which uh, the people that are part of the code of conduct committee, we have also, you know, a list of people that who are part of it. Because, for example, um, if someone has some issue with me, for example, of course, that they would not contact the whole code of uh, conduct committee, but they would contact maybe someone specifically. So this is another thing why usually we have a code of conduct committee for this. Um, but maybe this is like a really great thing speaking about it because it means we need uh, to work better together. Uh, and I'm speaking maybe now as a code of conduct committee person that I'm part of it, uh, to have a better relationship or to work more together and um, make maybe the process a bit more transparent. Um, and also emphasizing more in the community how it actually works, um, why people should also, you know, uh, contact the committee itself and so on. Yeah. Andreas. Okay. I, I think I'm very bit worried about the situation in the last term of uh, the last board. Uh, I was sometimes witness of uh, some behaviors uh, of members of the board and that were not uh, uh, in a way that is uh, appropriate uh, to uh, volunteers community, community. And I think with the current board, board it's much easier to handle things uh, um, complaints or whatever uh, from the community because there is not uh, a blocking board or members of the board that block uh, blocks things and um, 
um, make it much more worth than it uh, starts. Like in the past, I um, I was it's very very uh, sad situation. Some something of it is always is uh, documented in, in uh, minutes of the board uh, or in yeah in, in minutes of the board or in uh, in uh, on the on board discuss in uh, some threads uh, and that was a very very bad situation. Uh, I hope uh, I think the uh, the current board is much better in uh, in its uh, way dealing with everything uh, and um, working together with the MC than the past board. Shinji says in the chat, I don't know what the current status of the Code of Conduct Committee is. I would appreciate it if the board could explain. Previously, the board did not have an independent um, COC committee and the board served as the committee. I think the COC committee should be separated from the board of directors. Call writes, in the past term, there was a separate code of conduct committee and uh, Sophie? Yes, I raised my hand. Um, for the moment, it's not completely separated because I'm a member of the code of conduct committee and I'm a member of the board, uh, but that was uh, mostly to put the committee and the new code of conduct in place. Uh, I think that we will work to have a, a, a new committee in place, really separated from the board and the MC. Uh, and with the, uh, the focus of the code of conduct committee is written in the policy, it's clear. There is one thing that should be changed because it is said that the Code of Conduct Committee could could we remove a member of TDF, which is not true, but for the rest, it's in place and working. Um, there is still adjustment to be made to the Code of Conduct Committee, but uh, it's it should be working and and uh, almost done who's making those adjustments the code of conduct committee and uh, uh, for the moment it's not working it should be when the um, separation of power will be in place really this is an, an area where we have still to work. There are several others. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have a lot of work. Hey, I'll also wrote in the chat, was the Code of Conduct Committee instituted via a Board of Directors decision forming it? It's not mentioned in the statutes, if I am not mistaken. So what happened? I proposed a, a new policy uh, because we have difficulties with uh, our uh, program who didn't like uh, at all the code of conduct uh, policy we had. So I worked on it uh, and of course uh, it had to be accepted by the board. It was accepted by the board. I formed uh, a committee uh, in a bit of emergency and uh, with uh, the idea to work on it uh, later uh, but for the moment I had not the time to look at it uh, after that and um, well it's, it, it's, it is still the uh, policy and the committee uh, which is in place and should be re reworked.
You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts from the community? Anything to put to the candidates while we're still here? Just wait a moment in case anybody's writing a question. Just wait one more minute in case anybody's typing a question at the moment, otherwise we can wrap up. But let's just wait a little bit longer, another half a minute, a minute. So I think there are no more questions in th this town hall meeting. So in which case, um, thanks to everybody for turning up, asking the questions, um, candidates for answering as well and taking their time. Um, we have another uh, town hall meeting tomorrow. The exact time with the different time zones is in the um, uh, is on um, the community forum in the board discuss section as well. Uh, we hope to upload the recording of this town hall meeting very soon, as quickly as possible. So hopefully um, tomorrow as well, so we can post for the wider community as well. Um, yeah, otherwise, thanks again, everybody. And um, see some of you in the third and final town hall meeting tomorrow um, i'm looking forward to work with the membership committee as a board member and really hope they will help us to stay in the right right <laughs> thank you thank you see you bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank bye, -bye. You. bye.